So, good morning everyone. My name is Mohamed Uyam Makawar. I'm an assistant professor at uh, the Department of Software Engineering at Rochester Institute of Technology. And today I'm going to talk about refactoring. Two challenges and two takeaways. So this is all started when one of my students came to me and said, uh, Mohammed, I noticed that whenever I am pushing a refactoring pull request, it typically takes longer for me to get it um, accepted, right? And for me, that was a bit confusing because by definition, refactoring is the art of improving the code software design and source code without altering its behavior. So I would expect that to be something quicker to be accepted by code reviewers. But since he mentioned this to me, I said, why not? Let's try to see whether this is true or not, right? So what we have done is we have taken, at Xerox, we have taken 171 pull requests that were purely about refactoring. We have identified all the developers who did those pull requests, the authors of the pull requests. We also selected another set of 171 non-refactoring pull requests, either they're fixing the bugs or adding features. And then we compared them in terms of how long it takes to make a decision, whether they get accepted or rejected, versus also how much discussion this triggers between the code authors and the reviewers. And the results were interesting to us. They were challenging. So actually, what we noticed is, indeed, refactoring code, uh, refactor or reviewing code, refactored code, would take longer to be make, made a decision of, like either accepted or rejected, and also, it typically triggers a longer discussion going back and forth between the code authors and the reviewers to be actually um, accepted or rejected. And here, this becomes um, a, a, a challenge for people to refactor their code. And therefore, we come up with one recommendation. So this is the first challenge. The recommendation that we came up with is when you are submitting your refactoring pull requests, keep in mind the three I's. The first I is the intent. Okay, the intent is answering the what. What exactly are you doing with your refactoring, right? So you can be removing dead code or for example, removing or refactoring duplicate code, right? And then also mention the how. How are you refactoring your code? Like, what are you doing? Are you renaming? Are you extracting? Are you inlining? Are you moving? And explain exactly what are the code elements being involved in your refactoring. And then of course, you have to give the reviewers the way to assess and evaluate your change by telling them exactly what you expect this refactoring to do, right? Is it improving your ability, reducing complexity, reducing coupling? Tell them exactly what this is going to imply, and this is how they can also understand how to evaluate the intent through the, through the why with the refactoring, and then all the way to the implications, okay? So this is my first recommendation. When I used to live in France, I used to cross this railroad, which says here, un train peut en cacher un autre, which means one train may hide another one, right? So this problem that we notice with refactoring documentation may not necessarily be the only problem we are facing when it comes to refactoring. Actually, many studies have been f showing that refactoring is getting misused and even underused, we talk about developers still refactoring things manually. We talk about the lack of trust of anything that automatically refactor our code. And as we can just, we have just seen, we also have um, no formal documentation for refactoring. So are we truly suffering from a lack of refactoring culture here? Okay. And in one of those studies, they talked about IntelliJ being one of the main IDEs that developers use when they refactor their code. And that's what triggers us to RIT researchers to put, to join forces with JetBrains research to understand exactly how developers refactor their code using IntelliJ. And this is, was, in a nutshell, our investigation is we want to see how developers use IntelliJ to refactor their code. Okay, so what we have done is we went and we interviewed over a thousand developers. Many of them were, you know, between three to over 16 years of experience with the development. And we were asking them basically this question, how do you refactor your code using IntelliJ, right? And also the results were, again, showing another interesting challenge, right? So what we have found here is when the developers typically rename code, like they're renaming methods or classes, they actually use the IDE to do that. Maybe this is because of that you know, uh, keyboard shortcut that makes things easier for you as a developer to rename things quickly, right? And this is a good news because they are actually using the built-in feature of IntelliJ 
which guarantees that your code would not introduce any regression when you do this kind of changes, right? So this is a good, this is a good news. But on the other hand, when it comes to extracting stuff, splitting a method into two, for example, right? Developers, half of them actually use the IDE and the other half are still using the manual way of maybe, you know, copy pasting, splitting manually or creating a duplicate code, then removing stuff here and there. So it's not a perfect or healthy way of refactoring the code. And this may introduce errors in the code. So this for us was a bit alarming. And even worse, when it comes to moving stuff, you know, only one third of them, they are relying on the IDE to do that, right? And this becomes really a problem for us to, to try to work on, right? So this is exactly what we have been finding and this becomes the challenge, right? It is a challenge because we all are dealing with technical debt, okay? We had a whole workshop yesterday about technical debt and how we should manage it, right? And obviously refactoring is one of the de facto tools to manage technical debt. We, uh, we all have been dealing with, we will be dealing with in the future of this piece of code that nobody is there to touch, right? And we should not, we should try to avoid even reaching that level, right? And this is the challenge, technical debt is there, it will not, never go away, and one way for us to start dealing with this is to, next time when we open our IDE, we go to that menu refactor, right? And let's get familiar with it, and let's start learning how to use these features. Why? Because these features can allow us to refactor our code in a more healthy way. If you want to know more details about our study, these are the references. With that being said, thank you very much. <laughs>